This is your half-empty cup of joe. Pour a cup of this good-smelling coffee. It will taste as good as it smells. This show is hosted by Joe Jaquint and Jason Walker. Because half a cup is better than no cup. Good morning and welcome to the Thursday edition of the Half Empty Cup. And I'm sure today uh, this one is going to uh, cover a full range of emotion out there. Uh, we have David Weiss who's going to be joining us. Uh, he is a, I guess, Jay, would it be safe to say uh, a flat earth expert? Would, would, would that be... Oh, yeah. uh, a term that we could use yeah he's 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 one of the guys you want to talk to when it comes to this subject and uh he's he's got a uh, a website flatearthpodcast.com uh for all those people out there that because uh, I, i've been doing head counts for the last couple of years joe of you know listeners when it comes to this topic and joe i think you'd be surprised that that i would, I would say it's a little more than half maybe maybe even up to 60 percent of the people that i meet with customers or with just uh, radio listeners either believe that it's a flat earth or something close to it or are open to the idea of it. So, and I think in a lot of circles you think, no, that can't be true. Well, KHNC listeners are a much more open-minded group of individuals, so if they don't believe it's flat earth, I think they're open to listen to the, to, to the information. And if you're one of those guys, I've been going to, to Dave's website a lot over the last year or so, uh, flat, flat, or flatearthpodcast.com, and if you scroll down there, he's got... You know, you, you can you can see a picture of him uh, as you as you scroll down, and then it has the, uh, the the take the flat Earth crash course. You know, you can you can get some some very simple videos and and see some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. And 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 uh, I'm just going to let Dave do most of the talking, and we'll be asking questions, Joe, because you know, Joe Joe of course is much more the skeptic than I am, and I'm not 100 percent signed on to flat Earth because I just I think reality has a lot of questions we can't answer. So I don't say anything is definitive anymore. I'm just, you know, it, it was the KHNC listeners in 2018 when I bought into the gold company at Patriot Trading Group. And uh, Joe had told me, like, you need to do radio shows. You know, I'd never done a radio show. Just Joe's like, well, get ready for a daily radio show. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> and then the office uh, for Patriot Trading was in the radio station. So job number two is, well, help the radio station. They might be having problems over there. Okay, so I started doing that, and and uh, what, what, what was supposed to be a part-time job turned into a full-on overtime job. And uh, the people liked the shows I was doing. You know, I was doing the 3 o'clock show. Joe was doing the more traditional gold show in the morning. I was doing more of the social aspects of market crashes and, and, and uh, emergencies in the news cycle. And I started meeting with people, and, and in 2018, one of the listeners was like, Jason, you're so smart. I'll never forget this moment. Jason, you're so smart, but I can't believe you think people landed on the moon. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm doing radio, so i got to start looking at stuff, and, and you know, i, I got to provide information for my backing for, of, 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 of the world in which I think I live in. And that's where it started. Uh-oh, we didn't land on the moon. Joe, you're not even there yet, but, but we didn't land on the moon. We just didn't. And, you know, I've, I've seen the information. I did the, uh, the investigation. And then you just, you know, just with the JFK assassination, with 9-11, you start saying, man, you start questioning things, and so you have to find things that look or seem true. And then uh, sometime later, here comes the flat earth thing, Joe. So here we are on the half empty cup of Joe. I think I got one of the best guys to come on the radio show with us to talk about it, Joe. So I don't know if you have another comment before we introduce Dave into the show. No, let, let's get right to it. I'm, 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 uh, I'm curious to to uh, see what what he can add, uh, and I'm sure he can add a lot to the debate. I'm, I'm sure that that uh, by, by the time this is all over, uh, everybody's going to have an opinion. Dave, go ahead. Thanks for coming to the show oh. today. Thanks for having me. Oh my God! From your opening statement, my response is only going to be three hours. So let's just start with. <laughs> The the website is the flatearthpodcast.com, uh, yes. but the easier one to remember that takes you to the same place is flatearthdave.com, flatearthdave.com. That's all you have to remember. Everything I tell you today, if you want to look up more information, flatearthdave.com. So 
my quick opening statement, I'll make it short, is, you know, I just listened to your show and you're talking about the trillions and trillions of dollars in debt we are and all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. What difference does the shape of the earth make? And I will, I will say I agree. The shape of the earth doesn't matter. It's the lie that matters and who you are, where you are, what you are, and the power that we truly have. So we'll get into all of that. I mean, this is a long conversation. And then you, um, you, know, um, you said you have an open mind. Don't have an open mind where your brains fall out and just believe anything. Belief is the enemy of knowing. The people that are listening right now that are reaching for their dials to turn it off are the ones that are indoctrinated the most. They believe we live on a globe. They believe flat earth is a pizza flying through, flying through space which nobody believes, uh, except globe believers that Googled Flat Earth or maybe just, you know, remembered their indoctrination. It's, it's a, you know, they're the people that have a, what I call a double false model where they don't know their own model. They don't because we know it. And they don't, they have a false idea of what the flat earth is. So you're comparing two false things and trying to decide which one is right. So it's only the people like, uh, you know, only the people that take the time and look into it and are willing to put their egos down and actually look at scientific evidence. Um, once you open your eyes to flat earth, uh, you wonder how the heck you ever believe that we live on a spinning globe flying through a scientifically impossible space vacuum with air and water on the outside, spinning at a 1,000 miles an hour, orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour. And moving sideways at 2.2 million miles per hour, all at the same time. But nothing ever changes. The stars, go out tonight, take a picture of the stars, uh, put a note in your calendar to take that same picture next year, same night, same time, and every single star will be in the exact same position. Okay, we you know we can spend a whole show just talking about how the stars prove the Earth is flat. We can ta- take a whole show talking about how the seasons prove a, a flat Earth. We can talk a lot about how sunsets prove flat Earth, right? And these are all things. Well, what do you mean that proves the globe? That you know the sun setting below the horizon. Uh, yes, if the Earth was a globe, the sun would set below the horizon. But I don't think anyone would ever see it because you can't live on a ball and we'd all be dead. We have, we have a break coming up. Yeah, when you hear the music, Dave, that's us going to a break. We got five segments for two hours, so we got Dave for two hours. And we're gonna we're gonna delve into it. We'll get the phone lines out and everything here on the next segment. Welcome back, the half empty cup of Joe. Uh, I'm gonna open the phone lines because I, I think a lot of what the listeners want to hear about the show is is their questions, especially if if you uh, you know you're traditional. You went to school. There was a globe in you know, kindergarten. There was a globe. And this is what you believe. If, if uh, you want to ask questions, debate, you know, give give Dave something to, to chew on and ask questions as though, how do you prove this or that? Just just give us a call. If if you're curious about Flat Earth or you want to just, you know, talk about it, you're so happy that there's a Flat Earth guy, expert, uh, so to speak, on the air, just give us a call, 877-536-1360. That number again is 877-536-1360. You can uh, also text there and send a message if you would like. But, uh, but Dave, I know we can go all over the place when it comes to uh, Flat Earth. Uh, there's, there's so many things that we can cover. Uh, a little bit of Flat Earth 101 to start, and then we may have some callers coming in uh, shortly. Yeah, no problem. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I, we can hear you. You're, you're, you're clear. Yeah. No problem. Um, so people have uh, this gut reaction to fight Flat Earth. I mean, you could talk about goblins and dinosaurs and all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's interesting. And, you know, all sorts of stuff. Then you mention Flat Earth and you're like, get out. Get out of here. You know, um, it's, the, it's the first thing we're taught in school. When you send your kid to school, one of the first worksheets they bring home is the orbits of the sun and the moon and the, and the planets. And, uh, you know, and then all their children's programming, Sesame Street, Disney, it all has astronauts on it. And it, it's all controlled by NASA. NASA is not just an American space agency. NASA is the world intelligence agency. All of the other agencies in all of the world, the KGB, the all of them report NASA is above them. And NASA controls all of them. This is a shocking detail that people don't want to face. But when you understand the depth of this deception and why the deception, why would they lie, Dave? You know, there's so much more important things in the world, um, and it's how they get away with all the nonsense that they get away with. All the stuff they get away with is because you're lost in space, spinning out of control. So I could I could talk forever. Throw it back to you guys for a question. Is there a specific thing you want to talk about? And just remember, yeah, you, know you can what? find everything at flatearthdave.com. 
let, let me start with one thing that I put on the air here once in a while because we don't I, I don't talk a lot of flat Earth on this show, uh, you know, because we have lots of other topics, lots of other guests. But once in a while, it'll come up or somebody will, will take a shot. Uh, one thing I like, uh, Dave, that that for me, you know, I, I like what I like about flat Earth for me is the things that I the, the experiments I can do, the things I can see. You coming on, you can explain this phenomena better. So some of the basics, like. Do you have an explanation? I went out and got the uh, the infrared thermometer, you know, the, uh, from from the Home Depot, mm-hmm. and I got out there in, in front of the moonlight, and you know, just supposed to be reflective sunlight. And what it is is it's suddenly hotter in the shade from the moon, which means that it seems to me that the moon is creating its own light, and it's creating a cold energy. How do you explain that? Yeah. So, so there's a there's a whole bunch of things I need to comment on that. Um, first, the People say you can't have a cold light. Just Google cold laser. It is a real thing. So there is cold light. Um, the problem with the the moon being the moonlight being um, colder than the, than being in the shade when the moon is out is there's a thousand different ways to do the experiment wrong and get a false positive, right? Like a lot of people will will take the moonlight. It's on their driveway, and then they'll put a um, a piece of cardboard. You know. Um, a foot over the driveway. Well, that cardboard is insulating the heat that's radiating out of the out of the driveway, and you're going to get a false warming under a tree. You can get a false warming, but there are ways to do it where you're not insulating it, where basically the moonlight's coming down, and you put a piece of uh, cardboard or wood or you know stone, whatever, um, to create a, a vertically, and it creates a shadow, and then you'll see a significant difference in the in the shade. It is warmer. In the shade, the moonlight is cold. Moonlight, um, it, it, moonlight is just—it's colder. It's a colder light. So, what is that? Great question. It's not light. It's not a rock a quarter of a million miles away reflecting sunlight. And and, and going with the size, uh, something else that people that don't understand the, the flat Earth model, they, uh, they they see that simple disk floating out in space, and it's, it's, it looks really ridiculous because that's not what flat Earthers believe. But no. t- tell very briefly, what about the sun and the moon? You know, they're the same size, am I right? So let, let's just back it up just a little bit. When people, people that are thinking that we're a, a turnip or a pizza floating in space with water falling off the edge, you know, if the earth was flat, cats would have pushed everything off the earth already. You know, we, we've heard it all. That's not what the earth is. Large bodies of water at rest lie flat. That's a fact that's a scientifically proven flat. A glass of water, a bathtub of water, a pond, a lake, and the world oceans all measure flat when at rest. Okay, They all need containment. Don't believe me. Remove the bathtub. Where does the water go? Remove the side of the lake. Where does the water go? Remove the side of the ocean. What do we mean, side of the ocean? Well, all of our oceans are just, think of it like a giant lake. And the shoreline of our ocean has to be higher than the water to contain it. Well, the shoreline of our ocean on a flat earth is something we call Antarctica. And if you look it up, Antarctica is the highest land on earth. Well, that kind of makes sense if we live inside the Antarctic basin. So the question is, why isn't anybody allowed to explore out south, not down south, out south, beyond the shoreline of Antarctica? There's a hundred different companies that you can book a very expensive three-day trip there. And um, they'll just bring you to the tip of this island, which is gigantic, bigger than many countries. And they'll show you the penguins. They'll show you the ice. And then they kick you out. You're not allowed to go beyond the edge of the lake. What's out there is the question. And we want the right to know. So getting back to your your question, um, what was the exact question? I forget. I just wanted to get that baseline That's The down. size of the moon and the, and the size of the sun and how they, uh, are, yeah. you know, how they uh, revolve around the earth. So the, the flat earth, uh, position, you know, all of the stars, the sun, the moon, and the stars in the sky are moving, um, around the flat earth. And that's the default, and we're stationary. Well, that is the default position. The globe belief is that, uh, no, no, it's just tricking you. They're moving, we're moving, but they're staying still, um, which is scientifically provably not the case. They also tell us that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, and it's also 400 times farther than the moon so they look like they're the same size you know perspective you know distance and size you can Correct. make any two things the same size and uh, and so if that was the case and they're randomly orbiting you know in a random from a big bang the chances of an eclipse would be 
uncalculable, one in a quadrillion, okay, uh, of a total eclipse of the sun would be so minuscule that you would say that it's practically zero. And then the chance of it happening a second time, it's like winning the lottery uh, two days in a row, the, the Powerball, okay? It's worse. It's way worse than that, actually. And then well, the problem is there's eclipses every year, and guess what? They come in patterns, and at the end of 18 years, the pattern repeats itself like a fine watch, it's a, it's a sky, the, the sky is a clock and it is designed, it's not random chaos. So with that in mind, I did see a video about uh, solar eclipses where the, uh, the, you're taking a flashlight and a penny and they're saying, well, the flashlight's big like the sun and the penny is small like the moon. And no matter how far away or how close the, uh, the flashlight is, it doesn't really create an actual eclipse the way it should, even if the, the, the flashlight's on the other side of the room. But once you get a light that's the size of a penny and you get a moon that's, uh, or the, uh, you get a flashlight uh, that's the size of a penny and then you have the penny, you can do that eclipse pr pretty much from any distance, which what, doesn't that, uh, does that give you kind of a, a pretty easy uh, home experiment that the sun and the moon is, are, are approximately the same size? Well, that, that shows us that we can use, you know, take two objects, you know, a light source and a, a blocking source and create what looks exactly like what we see. Um, does that say that's definitely it? No, it doesn't really prove it, but it says, hey, this is a way it could work if they were the same size. And we haven't been able to make something that does it better. So, yeah, evidence yeah. is leading um, towards that way. On my app, which is called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app, which can be found at flatearthdave.com, um, there is a Frequently Asked Questions page, and then there's the Eclipses button, and there's a whole bunch of videos that, guess what? Google is hiding from you. You'll never find them. You search for them by name, they're hidden. Okay, you won't you won't find them. You'll find debunking videos. You'll find other videos um, to try to indoctrinate you right back into your little ball world. So. Um, I recommend people, you know, if you want to learn about eclipses, that's the place to go. Go ahead, Joe. So I got some some textures in here, Dave, and I want to uh, throw it out. One of the textures is, hey, uh, the, the Earth is neither round nor flat, but you can and you can prove both of them. Uh, and, and I thought that was kind of an interesting take. Another one of the textures wanted to know how thick. Is the flat Earth, and then right. somebody else said, "Hey, this is a great One show." One time, so, so, right. so there you go. <laughs> nice. All right, let me uh, let me address uh, both those questions. Um, the first one, really easy. How thick is the flat earth? The deepest hole ever dug was in Russia. It's called the Kora Bore Hole. And the United States and Russia, huh, interesting, worked on it together for years. And they'd only got down to 7.8 miles. Under, uh, yeah, under, under 8 miles. And um, while they were drilling, they were using ground-penetrating radar to see what they were going to hit next. They said, oh, look, there's no more rocks. Boom, they hit rocks. Oh, look, there's no more water. Oh, they hit water. Oh, oh look, you know, everything they were predicting was wrong. And then at 7.8 miles, they hit something they couldn't get through. And they tried for years. They tried blowing it up. They tried drilling it, diamond blades, all sorts of stuff. Drilling, drilling, drilling for years. Could not break through it. We'll call that an impenetrable barrier. Okay. Then they finally, you know, some weird stuff happened. Uh, well, that's another discussion. Um, they ended up closing the hole. So if you compare that to a Macintosh apple that has that very thin skin and you had a drill, you're drilling partially through the skin of the apple. You were wrong every step of the way, but somehow you know what's 4,000 miles inside of the earth, right? They didn't even get through the alleged earth crust. Okay, but somehow they know all these other layers, and it, and you know, worse than that, everyone's seen that cross section of the Earth with the molten magnetic core that gives us our North and South Pole. Um, molten magnetic core. There's no magnet in the world that can be heated to the melting point and hold its magnetism. They all hit what's called the Curie point, and that's where they lose all their magnetism. So they're laughing at you saying, ah, oh, molten magnetic core, there is no magnet. All right, and the other question, which was the more interesting one, which was um, the first one, what was it again? He said that the Earth is neither round nor flat, oh. but you can prove both. Yeah, yeah, so that's that's... Yes and no. There, when, when the stuff when you try to prove flat Earth, I tell people to get three bowls out. All right. One it says works on a flat Earth only. One says works on a globe Earth only, and the other one says works on both. You'll find that lots of stuff goes in those two the two end bowls, but nothing ever goes into the um, works on a globe only bowl. Um, we'll get into that, but you know, flat around. Well, you can 
you you can prove like on a flat earth our horizon is optical which means depending on the optics and the and the conditions of the day um we can see farther and sometimes we can't see as far but on a globe you have a physical horizon right so put a ball in front of your face up to your nose and ask somebody across the room if they can see your mouth the answer is no you say why you say well it's cuz it's below a physical curve and and you get a zoom camera a telescope and you zoom in on that ball still can't see, see their mouth because it's behind a physical curve a globe requires a physical curve at a set distance based on your height. And people go, well, the Earth is so big, you wouldn't see a curve, but they want you to believe you see a boat go over the horizon. Did you know that on a ball, the size that they tell us, um, I know we're coming up to a break, is there's a six-foot drop at three at three miles, six foot at three miles. So a, a six foot tall person standing at the edge of very calm water on a perfectly clear day should never, ever, ever be able to see the water beyond that three miles. It would be behind a physical curve. OK, but we can see things dozens of miles, hundreds of miles now. Right. And with infrared, we can see things super far that should be miles below a curve. We have a shot of a mount of a whole range of mountains, eight mountains um, that are 700 miles away uh, based on the altitude using the globe earth calculator, curve calculator. The tops of those mountains should be 40 miles below the curve. But we can see them. And the mainstream science is silent on that. They will not comment. Welcome back to the Half Empty Cup of Joe. Uh, we're going to go to our caller, Nick. If you want to call in, it's 877-536-1360 to join the conversation. Uh, obviously, if you have a question or, if, you know, if you want to say, hey, Dave, uh, or Flat Earth Dave, you're, you're an idiot, uh, and, 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 and you come with your information, Dave is more than willing to, to have a, a civil debate about uh, what you guys believe in or what he believes in, so... Uh, Nick, I'm going to go to you first before we, because uh, I have some stuff to talk to Dave about when it comes to the horizon, which we had started into. But, Nick, thanks for holding. What is your question or comment? Well, I just want to uh, thank the guest because, um, you know, I'm not a flat earther, but I think that any time you think outside the box like this, it's good for politics. I mean, we should question everything, especially elections. Um, everything in this universe is moving from electrons to molecules to galaxies. So I think one of the ways it would help the guest to make his argument is not to just use end the sentence with miles per hour, something spinning through the through the space at certain miles per hour. It's miles per hour relative to something else. Even when you get pulled over by a police officer going 75 miles per hour, what he's saying is you're going 75 miles per hour relative to the surface of the of the road. So um, you know when you say you're spinning through or spinning around or, or zooming through space. I would like to know mass per hour relative to what, since everything's moving. It, it only makes sense to say what your speed is relative to something else. The last thing I want to ask is, um, is, is the flat earth theory a argument for divine design? Is it a strong argument for God? The existence of. And I'll get off the phone. Um, if you want me to. Oh, then you, right. can, you can hang on there, Nick. Go ahead, go ahead Dave. Okay. Yeah, great, great, great questions. And, uh, you know, we're assuming that everything's moving, even though that we're, that everything's moving, including us, but there's no evidence. Every scientific test that's ever been done through history by cre credible, you know, accredited scientists have proven the opposite. Every time they're looking for axial rotation, they prove the opposite. Every time they look for, uh, curvature, there, you know, no curvature can be found. And, you know, when you look at, you have to look at a lot of things, um, including like how do you have high pressure next to no pressure without a physical barrier. But as far as things are moving, um, they say that the Earth is moving at almost a half a million miles an hour relative to the sun. So we're orbiting the sun at 66,000. I mean, no, no, I'm sorry. We're chasing the sun at a half a million miles per hour relative to the center of the universe. I, I got that wrong. And then we're orbiting at 66,000 miles an hour, speeding up and slowing down while spinning at a thousand miles an hour relative to ourself because the equator is about just over 24,000 miles around and we're spinning once a day. So you're going a thousand miles an hour, right? But that's net. You can't measure it. You can't feel it. You can't see it. And that, I know the, the program response is, well, on an airplane, I could drink a glass of water and walk to the bathroom and I don't feel it. 
If you want to compare an airplane to the slowest motion of the Earth, which is the spin, you have to double the speed of the airplane to 1,000 miles an hour from 500. You have to remove the outer shell of the airplane because we don't have an outer shell around the globe Earth. And then you also have to nosedive as fast as a free-falling skydiver to, to match the curve of the Earth, right? None of these things ever happen. Airplanes fly over the air, the Earth plane, airplanes. Every single t- – well, I'm getting into curvature, but – um. And so as far as motion goes, you know, we're, we're corkscrewing through space 4.4 billion miles a year from where we were last year based on a point in space in the galaxy. And, uh, and all the other stars are moving in their own positions. But as I said before, take a picture of the stars and match it up next year, 10 years from now. Every star is in the exact same place. That's scientifically impossible. They tell us that the sun's gravity is holding on to all of the planets, you know, all the way out to Pluto, but it doesn't affect the moons, right? They tell us that Jupiter has more gravity than all of the planets combined, but Jupiter's made out of 99% helium and hydrogen, which defy gravity here on Earth. So how much gas do you need? You know, gas fills the available space. How much gas do you need before it collapses upon itself? So you're quoting things that you were told in books by people that may not even have existed. For example, um, Copernicus, Copernicus or Galileo? Galileo, I think it was Galileo, one of those guys, (laughs) sorry, um, it is uh, he his book on the heliocentric universe was published after he died. So did he even write it? Right. So we're believing things in books when we can go out and scientifically prove that the stars don't move, that the heliocentric model is is impossible, that we can go out at midnight in December and look at the stars and then go out at midnight in June. We're on the opposite side of the sun looking in the opposite direction and we can see the same stars. That's heliocentrically impossible. And as far as uh, uh, for God, hey, when I came into this, I basically you can call me an atheist because I didn't believe it in, in God or creator or anything. And then, um, you know, and I, I studied a lot of different religions. I looked into a lot of things. I just like, ah, it's just not for me. You know, I'm a science guy. I'm an astronomy guy. I believe all that stuff. And it was all pseudoscience. And then when I realized that the Earth is a stationary level topographical plane, not spinning, uh, there's no more choice for um, random, you know, Big Bang creating it. In the Big Bang world, you can believe that God created it or you can believe that the Big Bang created it like the Jesuit priests uh, who made up the Big Bang suggested. Or, But in a flat earth, you have to accept the fact that there's a creator, period. Nick, does that make sense? And especially the beginning part where if, if as you said, everything is moving and if we are moving the way that the model has told us, our position, the way we see the stars, should change. Don't, don't you agree, Nick? If if we're moving, I, I got one more thing to add to that, Nick. Well, let, let me see what Nick says. On your taking a drink of water in an airplane, though, um, you said that you know you can't really remove the shell around the plane. That it wouldn't be possible, right? But you could if you were in a vacuum. So we could remove the shells from all our planes, and we could sit there and drink our water and go to the bathroom and not leave a shell around the plane if we were flying in a vacuum. When you spacewalk outside the space station, you're in a vacuum. You don't need no a shell around you like you do in a plane, and you're moving. Um, you know, when, there's, you know when, when the people in a space yeah. shuttle climb outside the space shuttle, they don't need their shell because they're, yeah. you know, they're in a vacuum. You couldn't do that in a plane, but you could do it in a vacuum, which space is. So, so let, let me let me address that. Hang on the line, if you would. Um, you know, you're believing in uh, men floating in space outside of a tin can in a space vacuum when we can't um, reproduce that here. We can't put a guy in a spacesuit in a vacuum chamber here on Earth without him dying. They tried it once, and before they evacuated all the air, he passed out and almost died, and they had to pressurize it super fast to get in there and save his life. Uh, we have a challenge out. Let's uh, put an astronaut and one of us in a vacuum chamber in one of the spacesuits and show us that it, it works. Go, go go on YouTube and Google anything in a uh, a vacuum chamber, a soda can, a Stretch Armstrong doll, anything, they explode instantly. They explode because the air pressure is trying to get out, not even into a perfect vacuum. They tell us space is a near-perfect vacuum. How come these guys wearing their snowboarding suits don't pop off like the State Puff, you know, State Puff Marshmallow Man, right? You cannot reproduce a vacuum with a soft-shelled suit or even a hard-shelled suit that doesn't explode. So you're believing a bunch of nonsense. And, you know, if you go on my on my app and go to the um, ISS... Uh, let, let me ask see all sorts Dave, of let me ask Nick a, let me ask Dave uh, Nick a question maybe we'll get on the other side what, what Dave is saying Nick is 
How would we have an atmosphere in a vacuum? How could the atmosphere even exist with a vacuum? Hey, Sharp community members, this is Tommy with Tommy's Barbers and Blades. We're reaching out to you guys to let you know that we're in need of a barber or stylist at our Mead location on Highway 66 and I-25. If you're a seasoned pro or know someone who's great, give us a ring at 720-745-0783 or stop in and talk to us. We're looking for you. Again, that's 720-745-0783. We're back here, the Half Empty Cup. Joe and Jason, uh, we got uh, David Weiss with us talking about Flat Earth, uh, 877-536-1360. And I've got uh, three or four texters here. Uh, question for Dave. Uh, can you speak about Admiral Byrd's uh Antarctica expeditions uh, and how that correlates. Sure. So Admiral Byrd in the 1940s and 50s uh, did uh, what's called Project High Jump. Interesting, highest land on Earth, Antarctica, high jump over the ice wall. I call it the ice cliff shoreline. And he went to the outer the outer area and he said beyond the South Pole, which is a problem on a globe, there is land bigger than the United States filled pond and um when he came back to new york there was a massive ticker tape parade for his uh he found this land he did an art he did a um an interview on uh, on the news back then you know when television first started and and um he behind him again was a giant flat earth map with a clock on it fascinating right you can look that up and uh you know What's he talking about? And so we believe, many of us believe that there is more land beyond the shorelines of Antarctica. Other continents. Imagine, here's part of the why does it matter. What if there was another 50 or 500 or 5,000 continents beyond the shoreline of Antarctica? We don't know. We want the right to go explore. But after he did that and said there's more resources, coal, uranium, you know, oil, everything – Right, the whole world's fighting over resources and land, and then all of the countries in the world all of a sudden agree nobody can go to Antarctica. Isn't that weird? All these countries that are fighting, nobody can go explore Antarctica. But hey, de- deforest the Amazon, no problem. The lungs of our world, and hey, we're going to the moon. In two years, we're going to the moon. Don't look over there. Look over here where you can't verify anything. Several years ago, Dave, we had Mark Sargent on. Uh, this was years ago uh, when Joe and I were st- just getting the radio station turned over because because Joe bought the radio station uh, in, just a few years ago. And I had I had posed that question to Mark Sargent, which was, you know, I, I understand the Federal Reserve and and uh, economics better, and I understand the controllers that control us through those economics. Uh, for Admiral Byrd to find through the ice, a massive amount of land and freedom. This is this would be the same as the new world for Europeans to escape monarchies and build a new free society for themselves. This would be a, a really huge reason why to not let people go where there may be untold amounts of land and freedom to go to because you can't control everybody if they have a place to go to outside your control. So I, I mean, I'm, I'm glad right. that the, the – yeah, I'm glad the texture came in with that. And and uh, Joe, Joe, let's go, to, a, let's go to an go, go ahead, Dave. Yeah. Real, real quick, there's a book called The Iron Republic. You can look it up. It's also in the book section on my app, along with a bunch of other books about land beyond Antarctica. And it's a story of a politician in the 1800s that got fed up. Huh, fed up politician. That's kind of nice. And he went to Antarctica in his ship, and he found an opening. And he ended up getting lost at sea for a couple months. They found land, and basically, it was an advanced civilization. Flat screen TVs, floating cars, a whole different way of government. Lived there for 10 years. He finally came back to Florida and showed the evidence and wrote a book about it or a bunch of articles in Florida Magazine, which you can't find a real copy of it anymore. Um, but whether it's true or not doesn't matter. It's talking about more land beyond Antarctica. Rings true to me. Great book. I highly recommend you watch it or just search on YouTube. Uh, it's, it's some people. There's an audio version of it. I'll listen to it on your commute. Go ahead. Joe, let's go to the next text. I got something. Because we, we haven't talked about the firmament uh, very much today, but we'll get to that after these next texts. Go ahead, Joe. How does a compass work in flat earth? Is there a north and south pole? 
Wow. That's a great question, and uh, the compass actually proves flat Earth. Compasses have to work on a level surface, okay? So how does a compass work in the south, uh, down to the south pole? The answer is it doesn't. Compasses don't work on the south pole. Why is that? If the Earth is a magnet, uh, you know, a molten magnet, again, another impossibility, and we have a north pole and a south pole, the compasses shouldn't work on the equator because they'd be being pulled in both directions by the north and the south. And all compasses in the south should point to the south pole, and they don't. They all point to the north. So here's a simple experiment you can do. Get a, draw a big circle on your table, put a big, powerful neodymium magnet at the center and call that your North Pole. Slap a, mag- a compass down on your table and the needle will point north. Now try to push that compass east or west and you'll find out that east and west are giant circles equidistant from that center point. And that's that. Does that prove the Earth is flat? No, because it's the same on a globe. Believe it or not, it's the same on a globe. If you lived on a globe and you were a mile from the North Pole and you tried to go east, you have to stay one mile from the North Pole. You draw a big circle around it. Six point two eight miles later, you're right back to where you started from, and. That's circumnavigation, but it works the same on a flat Earth. The problem comes in in the south, past the equator. On a globe, as you go east or west, you don't correct to the north. You have to correct to the south to maintain your heading. And that doesn't happen. You always correct to the north. So compasses prove flat earth. Very good. Now, that was the end of the text. If you want to call in, the lines are just opened up, 877-536-1360. Uh, you can be a naysayer or a pro or a flat earther. It doesn't matter. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll handle the calls. And- and, Go ahead, and as far as as far as circumnavigation, uh, billions with a B have circumnavigated the world east west or even like America go north past the North Pole, not over the North Pole, and then head south and you're in China, okay? But nobody ever has circumnavigated south because south is every direction away from the center. So on your circle with your magnet, draw a line away from that magnet. That's south. So south is, if it's a clock and you're there, south is every direction, every direction away from the center. Every straight line becomes south if you keep going straight. Only east and west are circles. Zero people have circumnavigated south. So, Dave, when you were talking about uh, the flat earth model and what it can be or what it is, uh, we didn't talk a lot about the firmament, which is in in most flat earth models, there's the firmament. And and that's a a crystalline or or such dome that covers the earth, you know, which which we talked about vacuum. This this would uh, rule out vacuum. Maybe there's vacuum outside of that or, or whatever. We don't know what's out of there. But I just want to talk about that and... And when I, every time I think about the firmament, I'm all sitting on my front porch. We've had a lot of rain in Colorado this, this year. And so I've seen a whole lot of rainbows. And the first thing I think of is the firmament. Well, the firmament does suggest that there is a curved sky, whether it's coming off of what we call your azimuthal grid of vision or the actual dome. That could be debated all day. But either way, um, it does lead to a firmament. Up oh, here we go, another break. <laughs> we got a short, uh, short segment, Dave. We'll have the over-the-hour break, and then we'll have the second hour. So that's you're listening to Flat Earth Dave on a half-empty cup of Joe. Andrew, I see you. You'll be the next caller. You stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, half-empty cup of Joe. We were talking about the firmament. Uh, we have a caller. I want to get to on that short segment, but uh, I wanted to talk. Is I've I've seen the uh, I've, you know what I like about Flat Earth a lot is 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 uh, for me, a lot of flat earthers don't believe 100%. I'm one of those guys. I know Dave is a... I, I, I think it's flat, but I think it's... I just, you know, I, I'm still in the I don't know all about it. I don't, it hasn't really settled in my brain as well as it has with Dave. And I just think there's a lot of unsolved questions. And, like, that's why I brought up the rainbow. Well, hold on. Because I... Yeah, yeah, go hold, ahead. Go. hold on a second. I'm not 100%. I, I'm 100% it's not a spinning globe, and I'm 100% that it's level yes. and horizontal. Am I 100% on how it's built and when, how big it is? And no, absolutely not. We want the right to explore. But every, you know, some flat earthers, the biblical flat earthers say there's just a dome. This is it. This is our world. I think that there's way more to Earth, as it says in the Bible, that goes way beyond Antarctica. Um, these are great discussions that we can have, but every flat earther that's a real, you know, that's a, that's a real flat earther knows that we don't live on a spinning ball because we've done the work. We know more about the globe model than the globe believers because if you knew a tenth of what we knew, you would be a flat earther because you realize the globe is absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the dumbest things on earth. (laughs) On earth, that's funny. Um, 
And once you once you see it, um, and, and as far as the firmament on the on my app, um, which could be found at flatearthdave.com, there's a Antarctica section. There's some very interesting videos in the Antarctica section um, about the sky ice and the dome and uh, some whistleblowers that have gone sky there. Sky ice. I saw the yeah. sky ice, Dave. Really cool stuff. Yeah. The sky ice. We may cover that because I, I had a, a listener send me some sky ice stuff uh, recently. But uh, we, yeah. I'm going to get the call on Andrew. Thank you for calling in. Uh, what is your comment or question? Hi. Um, I, I had a question that, uh, you know, when you flush the toilet bowl and the water drains, it goes clockwise in the northern hemisphere. Is it a truth or myth that it goes counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere? 100% myth. I have toilets that go in different directions. It's all the way the water flows into the bowl. On the app in the Frequently Asked Questions section, there's the Coriolis button, which will show you how they deceive you. But I have friends in Australia. Um, most toilets go in one general direction. It's just the design of the toilet. Some toilets don't even spin at all, depending on their design. But it's all how the water goes in the basin. Um, and so it's a myth. And it's a myth that people keep repeating again and again and again. Good enough. Uh, Angela, if, if you... If you could prove it, I guess you have to give us more video evidence. I, I, that's something I haven't explored deeply. But that's uh, Dave. Th thank you for that because that's one of the ones I hear and I like. I think about. I was like, well, I don't really know because I'm not in the southern hemisphere, so I can't flush a toilet down there. Yeah, it's not just toilets, but it's just anything draining. That's not true. It's a, it's a myth, and it's not true. You've never tested it. We have. It's going to give me something to have to explore for sure to, <laughs> after the show because I I love the experience. Dave, one of the videos, and you got you got to retell me because you got so many videos on the site. I watched the video once, and then I didn't bookmark it, and it showed the sunrise, a home experiment of the sunset. And I, and, and I yeah. tried to explain to people about point of view as, as uh, when you paint a picture, the road is super wide at the bottom of the painting, and then as you see the horizon, it, it, goes, it goes very narrow. Same thing with the telephone yeah. poles. They start very tall, and they go shorter. And we know that the, the telephone poles way far away when you're looking aren't shorter than the telephone poles you're standing next to. And I saw yeah. an experiment you can put on your tabletop with that same prism of how you actually see things, and it shows the sunset. That's not, and you're on a table. You're on a flat table. Right. It, the the it shows the the sunset um, f on a, it's called my flat Earth kitchen, and that also can be found in the sunsets tab um, on the frequently asked questions page on the app. But you can also my YouTube channel is D I T R H stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole, um, and you can find the video there. Great. We're gonna have our over the hour break. Stay with us uh, if you want to call in. We're taking callers, texters, 877-536-1360. We'll be right back with more of Flat Earth Dave. We're back here, the half-empty cup. Joe and Jason, our guest David Weiss, we're talking flat earth. And, and I'm going to, you know, uh, I consider myself a complete novice on this subject. So I'm going to ask maybe something that, that seems a little basic. But if the earth is flat, why don't we fall off of it? Why don't we get to the end, right? So what, what happens? Like, you, you never get so, to the end. <laughs> let's talk about that. So if you're uh, – let's go – we'll go to Kansas. Everyone knows Kansas is very flat. And we go, we're going to make a, an imaginary lake, imaginary lake in Kansas that's 100 miles around, giant lake. You can't even see across it really unless the conditions are perfect. And um, there's a whole bunch of islands on that lake. And at the very center of the lake is a big black rock, and it's a magnetic rock, very powerful magnetic rock. And so you're sailing around, and your compass is always going to point to the center of that. And there's your miniature um, Earth. Now, you can circle clockwise or counterclockwise, which is east or west, around that magnetic northern center point, or you can turn your back to the center and travel in a straight line, and eventually you're going to hit the end of the lake. Now, let me ask a question. When you get there, do you fall off the lake? No. Why not? Because there's more land after the lake. So you climb up out of your boat, and you start walking on the land, and you're walking away from the lake. And let's say you walk, you know, um, because this is a miniature model, a mile away, and you can't even see the lake anymore behind you. You're a mile away from the lake. So you keep on walking, you keep on walking. What if you found another lake? What would you do? Build a boat, I guess. 
<laughs> yeah, get on a boat, go out there and discover new continents, new islands out there. And maybe that lake has its own sun. These are things that we can speculate on. There are stories. There's lots of stuff. There, on my app in the images section, there's a map that shows a world with 173 different lakes. A flat plain with 173 different worlds. And if you read the book called The Navigator Who Crossed the Ice Wall, it's literally the story of Star Wars, but here on Earth, where there's hostile lands and pa safe passage routes between the lakes. The, and, if you, and if each one of those lakes was a um, another world, um, a piece of the plain might be called a planet. A planet. piece of the plane is the planet. And, yeah. and Joe, this is this. Is something I, I want to go to Rick. If you want to call in eight seven seven five three six thirteen sixty, Rick, hold on one second. But Joe, this is something else I haven't had a chance to get into recently. As a, and, and and Dave, I'm sure y'all have lots on this. But we talk about. I, I don't like the talk. I don't believe myself, especially with the firmament, is to me which makes a lot of sense. Space aliens is is nonsense. But if you notice, Joe, when it comes to government, and you know the government suddenly they're having these. These meetings and, and people are talking about there's there's actual UFOs flying around. They're they're they're, they're admitting to certain things, whether they be true or not. They're admitting to things they haven't admitted to in the past. But yeah. typically, a lot of what they say, Joe, in, in government is extraterrestrials. I actually believe that there could be extraterrestrials, which means extra Earth. And what Dave is telling us with his model is that there might be extra Earth. And what if there are beings? On the extra Earth, Dave, is that is that kind of similar to what you so, you think? So ter extraterrestrials, terrestrials is terra, extra terra, extra territory. So if people live, let's say you get to the end of the lake in Kansas, that's the end of your known world. You're now on Antarctica, and you keep going, and you find another lake, and there's other lands out there, and there's a civilization out there, and and uh, you're over there, and you know it's a long walk back. They're gonna take you in their hovercraft, and they're gonna fly you back to, back home. You're on a Ship, an extraterrestrial's ship from the outer space, from your point of view. Anything beyond the shoreline of Antarctica is the outer space, extraterrestrials. That's what they're telling you. And think about this. These lands, if you go back to the scale of our world, um, are just tens of thousands of miles away, which is nothing. 100,000 miles away. A million miles away, but I don't, not even that far. A couple, you know, tens of thousands of miles away. That's doable. Uh, at a reasonable speed, you know, an extraterrestrial literally could come here, you know, abduct you, do some experiments on you if you want to believe that, and then go home, get back home in time to have dinner with his kids the same day. Okay, and that <laughs> Dave, that you know that. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. Say we, we're I, we're loading up on callers, so let's. Uh, I want to I want to yeah. slow you down because okay. you you're, you're a ball yeah. of information. Uh, to, uh, the pun intended. Just, just, <laughs> we'll take the we'll take the callers, but um the you know extraterrestrials coming from outer space is ridiculous. The closest planet is twenty five trillion miles away. You can't even fathom that distance. Then they come here and crash right. in Roswell. I don't think so. All right, caller. Rick, uh, uh, once again eight seven seven five three six thirteen sixty. But Rick, go ahead, man. Uh, what's your call? Jason, you're getting into faking the truth territory, and I'm, I'm loving it. I missed that show. Uh, I don't have a lot to add to the. I don't have a lot to add to the conversation about about flat Earth, but I can corroborate Dave one of your points you made in the last segment. Uh, I live way the heck down here in Denver, and upstairs I got a toilet that flows in one direction. Downstairs it flows in the other direction. So maybe it's what story you're on. Yep. No, it's it's not. It's the shape of the toilet. Switch the toilets, and they'll go in the opposite directions. They'll, they'll you know, switch, they'll move them from one to the other, and you'll see that they do the same that they did before. We're gonna we're get, we're heading for that first uh, break for the second hour. Steve is waiting. We got Frank and Andrew. Just just hang tight. We'll get to you. Uh, and and really quick, since we have like seconds here, Dave, uh, I, I mentioned the rainbow. The rainbow makes a lot of sense. The shape of it being an arch. In a, in a firmament, whereas I've seen the experiments over a, a dish of water, and you have a straight rainbow. Right, and when you see a double rainbow, that's a reflection of the rainbow off the firmament, and you look at it, the, the, the colors are backwards because the reflection gives you the, them in reverse order. There you go. That's Flat Earth Dave you're listening to here on the, the Half Empty Cup of Joe. We're going to hit this break and continue on, and then... If, if you're like somebody that, that really, really holds on tight to the globe model, just if you got something, just bring it to us. We'll talk about it. 877-536-1360.
to Cup of Joe. Our guest today is Flat Earth Dave. His uh, website, let's make sure I make this right, theflatearthpodcast.com. And what's the other way they can get there, Dave? The, the oh, only thing you have to remember, and the only thing you have to remember is flatearthdave.com. That's it. I take the Flat Earth right. Podcast out. I've tried for years. Everyone forgets the, they forget. Flat Earth Dave, period. Flatearthdave.com. That takes you to the same place. Great. Let's get the callers that have been waiting. Steve, Steve, thank you for calling in. What is your question or comment? Hey, I got a great question for you. I got a lot of good questions, of course. Uh, you know, people down in uh, the southern hemisphere can take pictures of the south, and you see the stars circling over the South Pole. As a matter of fact, we got, I think, what is it, five national flags with the Southern Cross on them. For many, many years, uh, you see the same phenomena in the south as you look to the south, the stars circling around and around, just like they do in the North Pole. I've had a, you say nobody's been to the South Pole. My dentist went down there. He said he did anyway. No. He's got a picture of himself. You say he's a liar. Okay, I understand. But no, no I didn't explain, say that at explain all. Explain to me. Okay, explain to me why we can see the stars going around in a circle from the south as we do with the north. Yep. All right. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, it, well, we don't see them exactly the same. And what's called, well, it's called, exactly it's really hard. Hey, can you, uh, can you, are you done talking? Because we can let him go. No, and no, I'll answer. I'm saying they're exactly the same. Well, no, don't interrupt me when I'm trying to explain. All right, go ahead. Go, no, Steve, just hang on. Go ahead, Dave. Just, just, just uh, lay it out. So this thing called the corpuscular and anti-corpuscular rays, people don't realize, like when the sun is setting, you see these corpuscular rays shooting out over your head, and then when they pass over your head, they go back down to another point on the opposite side. So when it's setting in the west, in the east, they'll look like there's another sun right there. And those corpuscular rays will rotate, and if you look one way, they're rotating one way, and if you look the other way, they're rotating you know, counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on which way you're looking. And... Um, it has to do with our azimuthal anti, our azimuthal grid of vision. Now people go, oh, flat earthers are making it up. No, we're not. We took that from the globe model. The globe model says, um, the way we chart the sky is through an azimuthal grid of vision. We have our zenith, we have our, uh, latitudes, and, uh, and we chart everything on this grid of vision. On my app, on the bottom row, there's a thing called the Walter Bislin, uh, glo- is a glober, a glober that made a, um, a chart of how we see the sun and the stars rotate and if you just play with this thing for a little bit you'll see that southern that apparent southern rotation um due to the way that we see something that's a little more involved uh than that we can do on a radio show but um we've done many many uh shows on it um in the app on the homeschool section if you click schooling globers then go to star rotation there's a two and a half hour to three hour um in-depth explanation with examples and so you can fully understand it Okay, now that that would work if there was sunlight, but there isn't sunlight half the year in the South Pole. Okay, and it doesn't work at night either. No, okay, no, so no there's, there's no actually sunlight. no sunlight. You're, you're trying to explain an optical light illusion. No, which it's is the same thing with stars. No, same no, thing no, with stars. The stars are absolutely. moving. In a, they're going around in a circle, and you can see the now, stars are question. moving. Correct. Have you ever have you, have you ever looked at a planet through a telescope? Hundred hundred times. Took four years of astronomy. I had an observatory. Yes. Okay, and you and you know about a geosynchronous mount, then, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you can't keep a planet in focus. Have you ever seen? Uh, you know, uh, Jupiter revolves about once every nine and a half hours. You can watch the red spot go around it at night through your eye. I've seen it. I've seen it happen. If you yeah, shut off that geo, course. sir, if you if, if you shut off that geo mount, you can't see Jupiter it goes right through the right through the plane of view. Now, you say you can't see, uh, you, you're talking about mountains. Uh, I, live, I live here in Colorado. I can see Pikes Peak from where I am, but it's a lot lower than it is in Denver. If you drive out east, all the Rocky Mountains disappear. I mean, these things are, are pretty evident all over the place. So, Steve, let, so let, let Dave have, explain that. That's because well, that's yeah. point of view. Well, that's, that's the, the way we see things, Steve, is things disappear as, as they get farther away. It's why you can't see a human being from an airplane because you're too far away. So, so Dave, why don't you explain that because... Uh, it, it, it makes sense. Steve is seeing what he's seeing, but it's not what we think it is. A- a- absolutely. There's a there's one one spot. Um, 
you know, in actually in Malibu, you can see Mount Jinto uh, or Mount Mount Shinto. I forget the name of the mountain. And uh, at the very top of that mountain should be the only thing sticking up, but you can't see it. It's gone. Like you look at it, it's blue sky, and it's like, well, it must be below the curve because it should be below the curve if the Earth was a curve. But then you take out an infrared um, um, camera, and there's the entire mountain. It's right there. And infrared, in a way, if you want to squeeze. If you want to, no, no, you can actually see the mountain. And if you want to scream refraction, infrared cuts down the refraction, so we actually um, should see less of the mountain if it's refracting up. So we so, can. So let, let, see let me it. jump in, Dave. Let, let me jump in, Dave, because yeah. I've, I've seen these videos, Steve. And you'll, you'll have to look at these videos yep. yourself. I, I'm going to have to do this myself, cause just like I do my experiments at home. I've seen the video, Steve, where you're watching. I've seen videos where they actually get a ship and the sun going over the horizon. The sun is setting. The day has ended. And through, I think it's a P900 camera, Nikon camera, they just zoom, and the sun and the ship come right back into view. Steve, I don't know how you can explain the, 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 the curvature of a ship and the sun going past the curvature, and then you just zoom in with this camera, and it comes right oh, back into refraction. view. How do you explain we've that? We've seen that before. It's refraction, and we've also seen the same effect uh, with mountains at a distance. You can see that very nope. well. I mean, Pike's Peak does not drop off the map. You see the peak going down. It's a lot smaller from where it, we are 140 it doesn't drop miles off the map, right. of it. No, it's it right there. It does get smaller. But you, as you get it does closer, get smaller. you go to, as you get it into Colorado bigger. Springs, you see how big it is. I mean, it gets many bigger. of these things are... You know what happens with the Flat Earth Society, really, is I think a lot of scientists... No, it's not the Flat Earth Society. Just, See, that's where you go. You know. We're not the Flat Earth Society. We don't... That, that Flat Earth Society is where you go to get disinformation and laugh at Flat no. Earth. No Flat Earther oh, ever we, goes to the Flat Earth Society. Well, Only well, let me, let me Global Globers go there. So sitting into an on all out argument, because we were, we're specifically talking about what... And he said refraction. Dave, what about refract? Because yeah. okay, so there's there's some phenomenon that would make me able to zoom in something that went over yeah. the curve. What is refraction? How would glo that work, work or glo not work? Glo Globers love screaming refraction, but refraction doesn't bring something that's hidden back into view. Refraction can distort things, and you can get a mirage. Um, you can get uh, you know an upside down ship, but refraction doesn't bring things back from a hidden um, a hidden thing. For example, we get the sun's uh, setting. You get two people across a body of water or a flat salt flat or whatever, and um, we take a mirror on the ground and we flash the sun at the person that has the sun behind them. Now we'll do it where there should be over. Six 60 feet, a six-story building in between them, and the person can see the sun flash in the mirror. Now, that's, that's not refraction. That's a direct line of sight. But there should be a 60-foot um, curvature blocking that. And, uh, you know, and the way to test it is, you know, flash somebody with a mirror and then put a wall in between you two and flash the mirror. They're not going to see it anymore because it's hidden. Let, let, it's not Steve, let, me, let me add one thing, yep. to Steve. And, 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 and just to let you know, Dave, Steve is a contributor here at the radio station. He's, he's, uh, he's one of yeah, our no guys, just, just to let you know. But, I, I uh, get Steve, it. No, I get it. it, it, it Good. Well, let me, let me say this to Steve. So, Steve, we're talking about refraction or we're talking about the curve or we're talking flat earth where things disappear because they get out of your line of sight. That's why I went to the airplane. So if I get in a, in a rocket or a hot air balloon, whatever, and I can see you, you're staying on the ground and I'm in the hot air balloon. Steve, at some point, as my hot air balloon keeps going up in the air, higher and higher and higher, you disappear. All right, you're not going over oh, yeah. a curve, but you're disappearing. How come that, that's so hard to believe that that's the same thing we're seeing with our horizon? I think it's because uh, the, in some cases, of course, it is distance, but in some th cases, it isn't. I mean, the stars, as you mentioned, they haven't moved. We see the same stars. Orion can be seen uh, during the uh, summer months if you could see through the blue sky. I watch stars myself. What I'm saying is everything in the solar system is moving, including the sun. Everything is spinning. We can see that spin. We can track these planets. You can watch the red spot go across Jupiter. Now, here's yeah. the question. Here's the question. I have a question next for year, you. Next, oh, no, I, got, I still got another one, though. Next year, we're going to have a, a solar eclipse. They know exactly yes. when it's going to happen. We've got, yes. we have got, we have got records. Where does Flat Earth have any design to, that you can actually watch this system turn around wow. and predict exactly where it is? I don't know where it is. Show me if, it, if you got well, one. Because, because, 
because you haven't seen. As a matter of fact, NASA gets all of their eclipse predictions from a guy named Fred Aspernak who uses the, the, Sor- the Soros cycle to predict them. The Soros cycle was discovered when that found off of Greece a, a device in the water that's been over there for 2,000 years. It was in the water called the Antikythera mechanism. And they couldn't figure out what it was. But then with late, with technology and MRIs, they, actually photographed it in three dimensions they, and they rebuilt it and it's a device from 2,000 years ago when everyone knew the earth was flat um, that predicts the, the position of some of the planets the sun, the moon and all of the eclipses and it has both cycles on it uh, showing you solar eclipses and, and lunar eclipses uh, based on a flat earth yeah but what about other things like the moons around Jupiter the moons around Venus uh, we've the, seen all the these lights other around moon, the, the lights around Jupiter the, yeah. Well, they're actually moons, we, and they're moving, and they're revolving. Too, how do you know that? How do you know that? We can see them. How do you them? know that we they're moons? Them. You can see lights. You, do, you see lights. You can see them very well. We've actually sent so, satellites up there in pictures. So, I mean, you know, yeah. guys, it, it's well, kind of crazy. I can address that. I can, I can address that. I can address that fully and prove that they're not what you say when we well, have Well, Dave and Steve, hold on, because because you guys are you spin off. So hold on. I want to I want to address the moons of Jupiter for a moment. Uh, uh, Dave, a- answer this for me, and Steve, would you see what this, how this makes sense. Because I've seen that if you're looking through a, a, a you're looking through not- the uh, telescope, you're looking through the telescope yeah. at the moon and the stars. Dave, it's much different when you look at it through the 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 P900 uh, Nikon camera. Suddenly, you're seeing something very different when you look through that camera. Yeah, I mean that 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 I'm not going to use that as a proof, but when you zoom in and actually look at these things with the optics that we have today, they're not um appearing to be, you know, you see these energetic pulsing orbs of energy. Now, as far as the moons off of Saturn off off of Jupiter, you have to understand what the inverse square law of light is. This is where half the audience tunes out because they don't understand that light doesn't stay intense. It spreads out, getting weaker and weaker. Every time you double the distance to a light, it's a quarter of the brightness. Okay? The distance that you, for, let's just go to the moon, way closer than Jupiter. The moon would have to be 60 times brighter than the sun for us to see it at one lumen. With that, like when we see it, if we said, okay, a full moon on a clear night is one lumen, um, it would have to actually be 60 times brighter than the sun for us to see it according to the inverse square law. And now do that with sun reflecting off of moons of Jupiter and we can see that reflected sunlight off of a dusty, dirty moon. I'm sorry, you're not thinking it through. Incident light travels very, very directly for a long distance, regardless of its luminance. And that's part of the reason why we can False. see the moon. At the, no, False. it's not true. Where's your Where's no. your reference on that? I want to check you. My, uh, I'm going to come yeah, back yeah, to that, too. Go, yeah, absolutely. Go go check out, and I have, we have videos on it, the inverse square law of light. Light spreads out in every direction as it's going away from its source. Okay? But there and is that's direct a fact. You can, you can get... There, there, there's no, a direct... There, there, we have... A, there, there is a direct, but as the farther away you get, the, the, you know, if you, if you have a square inch light sending out a million photons at a, at a foot away, it's now four square inches and there's still a million photons at a four square inches. And then at two feet away, it's, uh, it's 16 million. You know, it, it, it just keeps spreading out and those photons get thinner and thinner and thinner, which is dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. The inverse square law is not a theory. It is a proven fact. We can do this. Yep. You can only see a Look light from sunlight. a certain distance. Look at sunlight. Look how the sun is small and close. Yeah, yeah. And it's right, it's and, right there yeah. inside um, of the firmament. The sun is yeah, so, so, so Steve, the, so Steve, the, uh, Steve, the sun is, is inside the firmament. It's uh, essentially the same size as the moon, and it's moving. And the reason that you have sunsets is because the sun, just which is what he, uh, Dave is talking about, the sun just gets too far away from you to see it. Because when, you, when yep. people see the ridiculous glow, uh, flat Earth model, they're like, well, I see that that thing is spinning around. I should be able to see that all the day long. Well, but that's not how it actually works when you see stuff. Just like the, the telephone poles I talked about earlier, Steve, they get smaller as they go away. But we know the telephone poles aren't smaller. They're the same height all the way down. And this is how there's things a, disappear. There's a video. There's a video I have coming out tomorrow. It's going to be the featured video on the app about perspective and how the sun sets. I highly recommend people watch it. It'll be on my channel, D-I-T-R-H, on YouTube. We're going to have more with Flat Earth Dave. If you want to call in, Andrew, you're up next, 877-536-1360. You can text there, too, if you don't want to get into a debate, but you have questions and you don't want to, you can text 
and then Joe will read your text online uh, on the air, and we'll uh, talk to Dave some more on the next segment. We're back here, the Half Empty Cup, Joe and Jason, our guest David White. We're talking flat earth, and listen, I appreciate all the callers. Uh, uh, obviously, a lot of spirited debate, but I want to. I, I just want to uh, tell everybody I appreciate everybody showing each other respect it because uh, this is how we learn. This is how we're able to get better, and uh, I, I just. Uh, the, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're not going to solve all, all the problems and all the questions, but it does definitely, if nothing else, it gives you something to think about, and maybe we need to think about things a little differently. Uh, it won't be the first time that, uh, especially here at KHNC, that, hey, something that, that appeared to be one way, once you dug into it, it turned out to be something totally different. Agreed, Joe. Absolutely. And, and Dave, let me, let me say this because we're going to go to Andrew here in a minute. Uh, maybe just get a sentiment about people that are, are, you know, that believe the traditional thing that we've all been taught that it's a, it's a, it's a globe, it's a sphere spinning around the sun. What is, what is your reaction to the average person? You know, because yeah. some people might get the wrong idea that maybe you're a hater. But, but on top, but on top of that, no. for, for globe, for globe believers out there listening to this show, I don't really care. I'm going to go my point. I don't care that you believe it's a globe. Uh, the way I look at it, when it comes to if you want to jump on the show and debate or talk about it, uh, we're not, I'm not going to try to change your mind. I'm, I'm going to. Well, how about this? I'm trying to change your mind as far as look at look at the model. You got to look at the flat Earth model Don't, before you can right. really crap on it. But I, I look say, at it like this: It's so funny that that people crap on flat Earthers, but then you can watch a fict a fictitious movie about any subject, and it's okay if it's in that movie. So if you don't believe in flat Earth and you and maybe even don't like it or hate it, just look at it as a fictitious movie. You wouldn't get angry at the movie. You wouldn't grab the, the DVD and throw it across the room and smash it because you're, you're mad at it. Just take you a might. look at it. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll take a look caller, at it. What was, the previous, what, was, what was your previous caller's name? Last Steve, guy? Steve, Steve, Steve Stars. So I, I used to be Steve. I used to literally attack flat earthers. I used to say that they were dumb. I'd insult them. I'd block them from commenting on our podcast. Um, and, uh, and then I was forced to actually take the time and look. And I didn't go to the Flat Earth Society because I knew that that was controlled opposition. I'm like, that's interesting. You know, why did Obama mention Flat Earth Society a dozen times, you know, during his presidency? And I realized, um, they're trying to control your mind. And, and, you know, once you have this core belief, it's really hard to let it go, especially, you know, the older you are, the more uh, locked in you are into these beliefs. And, and not just old people. Talk to an 11 year old. Tell him the Earth is flat. He'll chop your head off. Exactly, exactly. I get it. That's yeah. awesome. Um, let's, uh, we got two callers coming up. Let's, let's get Andrew back on first. Uh, hold on, hold on a minute. I gotta get him on. Okay, Brian, or Andrew. Andrew first, then Brian. Andrew, thank you for calling. What is your comment? Okay, um, well, I had two, two things. Uh, one is, uh, the book of Amos 9 6, the Old Testament. This is the New Amsterdam Standard only. It says, the one who builds his upper chambers in the heavens and has founded his vaulted dome over the earth. There you go. There, but, there's over 200 uh, verses you, in the Bible that refer to a flat stationary earth. Yeah, and then um, I don't know if you, you were talking about walking past Antarctica and keep going, but you didn't mention the dome, which uh, I don't believe uh, the spaceships can get past, but that all the stars are underneath the dome, but at 72 miles, they hit like a, a water thing again. Yes. And, yeah. uh, so, hey... Let me, let me comment, let me comment on that. Um, yeah, I don't know sure. if we can get past, if we get past, uh, terminating dome in Antarctica. It's a great question. I'm not saying you're wrong and I'm not saying I'm right. Uh, either way, I, we, you know, there's a whole bunch of options. I personally think that there's more land and I think that times, uh, things open up like they, which they call the summer gate. And I think it actually works well with the Bible, but I don't know. I'm not claiming I do know. I'm claiming we want the right to go explore. We want airships back again. There used to be airships here in the 1800s. 
like you couldn't even imagine, like the size of cruise ships. Um, so I want that, and uh, I want the ability to go explore with you, with people that have different beliefs. That's that's what we want. And then what was the other thing you said? Um, I'm sorry. The bi- it, it was, was, uh, it was uh, the Bible verse, Andrew. which is in the New American Standard only, Amos 9 6. Oh, yeah. It's the one I always go to. Right. But there's some more right. really good ones uh, in Genesis 1. Uh, the complete Jewish Bible says, God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Let it divide the water from the water. God oh, made yeah, the yeah. dome and divided the water under the dome from the water I, above the dome. I believe page, page, page one of Gen- thank, page thank one of. Page one of Genesis said that God separated the waters from the waters and created the firmament. Okay, so, you know, people go, what about Isaiah? Isaiah said the circle of the earth. The definition of a circle is a line on a plane, which is a flat surface, where all points in that line are equidistant from a center point. Okay, that works perfectly on a flat earth. It doesn't work on a curved earth. Okay, so, you know, on the, on my app, on uh, the more resources page, which is the web, the spider web looking button, there's two buttons. One of them it says biblical flat earth. The other one says uh, flat earth 24-7. If you love the Bible, hate the Bible, believe the Bible, don't believe the Bible, you need to watch those. Everyone needs to watch those videos because they will blow your mind. Excellent. We're going to put another caller in. If you want to call in, it's 877-536-1360. This one might bleed into the next segment. Uh, so let's let's go to Brian. Brian, thank you for calling in today. What is your comment? Well, I called in back when it was just you, and you said you needed somebody smarter than you to answer it. Uh, and uh, the primary center point of my question is uh, Coriolis effect. Are you familiar with Coriolis effect? Yeah, we were talking about that with the spinning of the toilet, which is a myth, and the Coriolis effect is an uh, is an assumed effect, which actually isn't real. However, uh, uh, storms do generally spin in opposite directions in different hemispheres, and that's because if you look at the flat Earth model, the sun and the moon create a wake, an electromagnetic wake, which will spin uh, things in opposite directions. Just like pushing your hand through a tub of water, you'll get opposite spinning vortices on the outside. Well, you are, you are aware that uh, all weather systems north of the equator spin counterclockwise? That's false. That's Actually, North many North times... Hurricanes. That's false. Yeah, that's false because they generally do because of what I just said and because of the way the way the toroidal field of the flat earth works. However, there's certain times every single year it happens where storms will cross the tropics spinning in the wrong direction, which completely negates the Coriolis effect. There you go. That is uh, Flat Earth Dave. If you want to call in, it's 877-536-1360. Dave, you're up next. And uh, we got two more segments with uh, Flat Earth Dave. We're, we're, we're talking flat earth, and uh, I'll say this. We will have David on again because uh, I, I know there's a lot of people. Everyone's got a lot of – my mind is was blown a long time ago. You guys are talking about stuff that I've never even heard of before, uh, and, and, and I can understand – uh, how people are like, man, I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. I got a, I, I got a texter. This, uh, I think this is another great question. Is, is the sun flat? Are, are other planets flat? Uh, uh, and then the, uh, what about the orbits uh, around each other and all that stuff? Yes, yes. So let, let me answer that. That's a great question. And here's the thing. Don't believe anything I say. Go and verify everything. The problem is we were taught stuff in school to memorize and regurgitate, and we have a lifelong belief that that's the way things are. And then uh, it's, uh, you know, when evidence is showing you that that's actually completely scientifically provably false, um, people have a hard time letting it go. Don't believe anything. I'm just showing you where you can go do the test. And we've done them for you where you can watch. I On my app – um, it says uh, there's a, a section called uh, Scientific Experiments where we did all the experiments and we documented them for you. Not just believing a video, we show you. We show you the measurements. We put a red, green, a red light, a green light, and a yellow light on a frozen lake miles and miles and miles apart in a straight line. And we put the camera down on the lake, on the, on the ice, and we could see all of them at the same level. They're all magically visible when they should all be behind a curved ice. 
right? Water doesn't curve. So, so you know, but don't right, believe jokes. anything. Take yeah, your time. Go, go right. yeah, Take call. Go I ahead, love it. Joe. Yeah, we say that all the time. Do your own research. Uh, and I know we're going to go right to the caller after this. I just got a text in. If the government wants us to believe that the earth is, is a globe, then I'm convinced it's flat. There you go, right? That's that's enough said. <laughs> there you go. hundred percent. That's a smart person right there. I'll, I'll say this, uh, uh, Dave. Uh, we, uh, yeah. uh, we've been saying this this week on some of the shows we've been doing uh, this week. And I, I did a show on Aaron Russo yesterday. And I, I keep, you know, this is a saying that it keeps coming up uh, on this show in particular, which is, it's easier to fool someone than to convince someone they've been fooled. And it's it's so hard yeah. to get a 9-11 person to understand that yeah. those buildings were blown up by people that were here in this country, our government. And there's just yeah. so much evidence. And we're going to have our 9-11 show next month. And it's, it's going to be the same as having you on for Flat Earth. you, you got to look at this stuff and have Who a little bit of an open for that? Who are you having on uh, for uh, that show? I take I take the the part two of the – of. Uh, Peter Joseph's Zeitgeist, because uh, you know what I do is I narrate the parts with, which are just words, and then I play because yeah. he's got the the, the nine eleven uh, myth, and I read I read the parts that need to be read, and then I just let, let the material speak for itself. Yeah, the my, the first podcast I ever did of the deep inside the rabbit hole, oh, the title was nine uh, eleven is Dave's baby, and nine um, eleven is amazing. If you want more information on nine eleven and many of the other hoaxes that YouTube won't let you see, stop, look, think. Dot com and just search 911 and you'll find amazing documentaries that for some reason are hidden on Google. They don't want you seeing them. Say, say Stop, that site one more time. Stop, Stop look, look, think, look dot com. Think, dot com. Yes. We got Dave the caller on hold. Let me get to him real quick. If you want to call in, the phone number is 877-536-1360. Caller Dave, what do you have for Flat Earth Dave? Hi there, Jason. Um, I like Joe's comment earlier regarding the uh, blowing your mind. Here's a concept that I was taught about 20 years ago by a good friend of mine that the Bible is given to us as basic instructions before leaving Earth as an acronym. And with that being said, Psalm 103.12 says, as the far as the East is from the West, that's as far as his transgress- our transgressions have been sent. Um, which there's no concept or no way of doing that with a flat or with a with a globe, but a flat Earth there is that concept can be fulfilled. Yep. And with yep. uh, and I thought of the guy that taught me this or told me this, I couldn't believe it. But the more I thought about it, that we are in a in the womb, so to speak, of God. He is so large, and His glory is so bright that. We can't see him or else we'll, we'll die. But if there's a hard firmament up there, the stars are the pinpricks be, that are uh, pinpoints into that firmament, allowing God's glory to be seen through them. Does that make sense? So if you have it's a very, firmament. Very interesting. Yeah, I thought it was. And it makes a lot of sense. If we're, if we're in this life to be giving him glory we are in this womb producing a um no we're we're producing ourselves as a uh finished handiwork that he can be glorified for and he's proud of us but if we um we come through this life we're born into his kingdom and being able to be coming out into his glory I, Dave, thanks for the call. We have another caller we're waiting on. Dave, uh, Flat Earth Day, go ahead and uh, respond to that, please. No, no, I, 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 what he's saying, it's all true. It's all an amazing place. The word boredom should not exist, and no Flat Earther ever uses or thinks the word boredom because life is far more amazing than you know working all day and watching Netflix and drinking beer and winning your sports team winning is your victory. Um, that's not what life is, but that's what most people's lives are. So um, 100% Joe, got- keep researching. Joe, you got a comment? Yeah, so I got it back to the texting. Is there any truth to flight patterns going to northern hemisphere and not direct when it's in the southern hemisphere? Also, do airlines not fly in a straight line for curvature of Earth? 
Yeah, well, um, that's a very good question. Uh, airplanes fly straight and level from uh, point A to point B, and that's uh, provable. Um, you know, if, if you think of the globe, you know, right around the middle, north, um, in the, the north at the top and the south at the bottom. Any flights between northern airports would never cross below the equator, and this, and then none of them ever do. Uh, in the south, the same should be the the. the the same should be the case. A southern airport origin to a southern airport destination should never go above the equator. But uh, all the long flights, they go way up into the north. You draw oh, that's a, that's a, that's a visual. Airports. It's always a straight line. It's always a straight line. And with Dave, that, that, that's a very visual thing. You have to see a flat earth map in front of you to understand. We may cover a moment of that on the, on the last short segment. And we got Ted coming on as a phone caller. Hang with us. We'll be right back. Final segment here on the Half Empty Cup of Joe. We're here with David Weiss, Flat Earth Dave. And just for, the, for you guys listening, and uh, it, we have our call. I, I have the callers in front of me, and then Jack helps me with the callers. And uh, whatever you call yourself, uh, Jack types it in. So I, I always encourage creativity. So uh, t- uh, holding over the break was Ted with an E. <laughs> I, I love it. Ted with an E. What is your uh, comment, sir? Yeah, no, I got oh, you, by the text, but I was just, are you there? Yeah, go ahead, Ted. Can you hear? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah Ted, get, go the ahead. Text, yeah, I was just calling in to reiterate kind of what you were saying. I know in the past you talked about some flight lines and actually specific destinations of why they go clear around instead of going just through that diagonal. So that's just all I wanted to add. If you had those places again to tell us again, and all that. So, excellent. Dave. Yeah. So, um, there, there's a there's a book online called. Uh, we, you, you can find the PDF online. Or you can get it on Lulu. dot com. It's called. Uh, it's also listed on my website. It's called Sixteen Emergency Landings. And uh, the, you know, people claim, oh, well, the reason the airplane goes all the way up to the north is because uh, they have to drop off passengers or change pilots or that's their hub. But then it's, sometimes there's an emergency where somebody dies suddenly, kind of weird these days, and um, all of a sudden the plane lands in an airport way off the flight path, like like they like why did they go all the way over there? And it's like a thousand, fifteen hundred miles, and somehow they get there in fifteen minutes, right? It doesn't make any sense. Dave, Dave, here's the, here's the cool thing, ju- Dave, about being on being on our AM radio. You can say COVID's a hoax yep. on AM radio. You can actually say I don't believe <laughs> the COVID. The, the vaccines are, are bull crap. Well, well I uh, and, and don't don't I'm take not, them. And don't believe. No, no, you, yeah. no YouTube uh, censorship, Dave. <laughs> Stop, stop, look, think.com, type in COVID and have your mind blown there if you're, uh, if, if you're somebody that's afraid of that. But, um, but my, my point is, the, these flights, if you look at them every single time, if you draw a line on a flat earth map from the origin airport to the destination airport, uh, it's always a straight line and that, that, um, the emergency landing is right on that line every single time. All yeah. of this can be found on the Southern Flights, uh, frequently asked question page of my app. And let me, let me try to uh, visualize that for Joe as we're going to end the show here, uh, Dave. So, Joe, just think of point A and point B as being a straight line for a flight. And now that now you got a, a medical emergency. On a globe map, point C, which is the emergency landing, is further away than point B. But on a, on a flat earth map, point C is right in between point A and point B, and it makes all the sense in the world why you would stop there for the emergency landing. So I, I hope that uh, if anybody that's listening, I hope that clears it up. Because Dave, you you are a uh, ball of energy. It's just great to have you on the air and doing the show with us today. So I want to thank you for that, uh, Joe. You have have any comments as we have the last minute of the show here? Well, I just want to thank Dave uh, for being with us today. Uh, just uh, it, it's great to have somebody that can get really, really technical with our guys that want to get really technical. Uh, we'll definitely have Dave on again. And it sounds like Dave, Dave's got a number of things that he can uh, sh- share his, his knowledge with us. So uh, hopefully it'll be something where we'll have him on regularly. I want to thank all the callers. And, and again, we'll let you know that ne- when, when Dave's coming on, we'll, we'll try to give you plenty of advance notice so you guys can load up on all those tough questions because uh, it really is something where all of us are learning and i love what dave says because it's something jason and i say all the time don't take his word for it he'll point you in the direction here's where you can go to look for it and 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 see it for yourself and i think that's probably the most important thing so dave thank you so much and i hope you come back again thanks for having me next time we'll get into why the lie that's the fun one 
do something. <laughs> there we go. Alex Jones coming up next. The only radio station in the country that plays him in the middle of the day. KHNC 1360. See ya.